Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to talk about this thing. Now, this is the HP Elite Desk 800 G2 Mini 35 Watt. I don't know why you need that many descriptors on a system without getting to the processor or anything, but I guess that's where we are today. Now, this system is super small. I mean, it's still only a one liter chassis and it's a G2 system, but that G2 can be very confusing. Now, this is just not a single system that we're looking at. Instead, this is part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro. Now, Project Tiny Mini Micro, we're looking at about two dozen different systems, or we have two dozen different systems already in the lab that we've been testing to go and see, well, what exactly do you get when you go and purchase these small one liter-ish systems? So we're doing a series on it. You can already see that on YouTube. We have an entire playlist that's set up so you can go look at these. But if you go subscribe, you can see whenever we come up with a new one as well. We recently took a look at something that looks very similar to this, and that is the HP Elite Desk 705 G3 Mini. And that looks similar, but there are definitely some differences. And even though it's a G3, this G2 system actually looks quite a bit more modern. Let's just kind of look at a couple examples here. So the first thing that you're gonna notice on the front of the system is that you have headphone and microphone jacks. You also have two USB 3 ports. One of them is actually a charging port, but then you also have a USB-C port. Now on the Elite Desk 705 G3 Mini, it was AMD based and we did not get that type C port. When we look at the back of the system, we see something that's I guess also kind of interesting. So we get four USB 3 ports, which is great. We also get, in our test system, we actually got a display port, we got a VGA port, and we got a legacy serial console port. So if you really want a serial console, maybe to hook this up to a switch or something like that, that's actually a really cool use case for this because you don't need an extra USB dongle. The system also has one gigabit ethernet and that's pretty much it. Now, something you won't notice on the back of the system is an antenna for Wi-Fi, And there's a good reason for that. In this generation, we didn't get Wi-Fi as standard and it wasn't necessarily even configured on a ton of the systems. So you can actually find a lot of systems on the secondary market that don't have Wi-Fi. One of the big reasons that we're looking at this system is specifically because of how much it cost. Now, this system was only $205 on eBay. You can sometimes find them a little bit more, a little bit less. You can also get them on Amazon as certified refurbished systems. And so that's a possibility. I think those things are a little over $230 or so for a kind of comparable system. And of course, these all fluctuate based on supply and demand. But at the end of the day, this is a very inexpensive system and something that's pretty analogous to the 705G3. There are a couple differences though. So first off, we only got eight gigabytes of memory. On the 705G3 Mini, we were paying maybe about the same amount, but we got 16 gigs of memory, so that's a little difference. And specifically, one of the kind of bummers in this system is that we got two four gig DIMMs. And that means that to upgrade, you actually have to replace kind of both DIMMs. Now, there is one really exciting bit about the SODIM slots. So if you look at the SODIM slots and how they're labeled, you actually have SODIM one and three, and they go to channels B and A. And so kind of like worse two or zero or I don't know. It's just kind of weird, but this actually is a dual channel memory configuration. So if you do want to get maximum memory bandwidth, you're going to want to have two DIMMs in here anyway. This generation actually used DDR4 memory. The previous generation, so the G1 version of this, used DDR3, which makes those systems a little bit less expensive. The chipset on these, if you want to look it up, is an Intel Q170 chipset, which means that it supports vPro. And actually on our system, this little sticker right here says that we have a Core i5 with vPro supported. So something that you should do if you do want vPro features, which gives you iKVM or something like that, you do want to make sure that you're looking for that vPro sticker. You're looking for vPro in the configuration when you're looking online and looking for listings. That's just something that you want to look for because not all of the systems supported it. That 35 watt is actually kind of an interesting spec. So on this system, you did not necessarily have a 35 watt only system. There's also a 65 watt. So we have the Core i5 6500T, but there is also a Core i5 6500 without T. And the non-T version is actually a 65 watt TDP part, whereas the T version is a 35 watt TDP part. So if you want more performance, you can get the higher end CPUs, but something to keep in mind is that if you have a higher end CPU, you're also gonna burn more power, which means you need more cooling, which makes these things louder. As is, our unit is very quiet, although we did have a unit recently that was pretty loud, but we're gonna talk about that in a different video. Inside the unit, you can flip up the fan and you can find the two SODIM slots there. Something else to look out for is that a lot of these systems came with hard drives. Hey, look, it was a sign of the times. 
Some of the systems came with two and a half inch SSDs because two and a half inch SSDs back then when these systems were new were actually more common. So we got a Samsung, I think it was an 850 Evo, 250 gig drive in this, but I think there's probably gonna be a pretty wide variance if you were to go buy them. You probably see different drives. HP has a kind of cool mounting system where they actually have little vibration dampeners because it's designed for hard drives. And those vibration dampeners you wanna see. So if you do wanna have a two and a half inch drive, it's actually nice to have those in your system when you purchase it, because otherwise they're kind of hard to source outside of a new system. Now to get access underneath that hard drive is something that you might wanna do. And to do that, there's just four little screws and you get underneath. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see an M2 slot that you can take an NVMe SSD, for example. And then you're also gonna see another shorter M2 slot, which is really there for Wi-Fi. Now Wi-Fi in this generation, if it does have internal Wi-Fi, what you're gonna find is that the vast majority of the solutions were 802.11ac solutions with Bluetooth 4, but there was an HP Wi-Fi solution that only had ABGN. So it wasn't an AC and it was a kind of older generation of Wi-Fi. So that's something to definitely look out for. The other thing to look out for is these systems sometimes came with external USB adapters that are Wi-Fi adapters. They're very inexpensive. Those are the things you want to watch out for because the Wi-Fi range on those is not necessarily good. And if you get a Wi-Fi ABGN, you're just not going to have the speeds that you get out of a more advanced AC unit. In terms of performance, let's put it this way. Compared to the 705 G3 Mini, this thing is far and away faster. I mean, this is just a completely different league of performance because you have the faster Intel processor. You may look at the core counts and say, oh, well, they're gonna be close, but back in this generation, AMD just wasn't competitive. Now we do have some Ryzen-based systems that we're gonna be looking at in the future, and we already have them tested and stuff, so those are much more competitive, but just in this generation, especially this time frame, AMD just wasn't as fast in this form factor. Something else we wanted to just point out is that the Core i5-6500T may seem like, oh, it's Core i5, so it's really great, but just remember that it's probably gonna be slower in most applications than a current generation or near current generation generation Core i3 processor. So just because it says i5 doesn't necessarily mean it's the fastest thing. And especially once we got to the eighth generation and ninth generation processors, the Core i5 chips actually had six cores. So a Core i5 8500T is going to be a six core part where the Core i5 6500T is only a four core part. So just something to keep in mind. In terms of power consumption, we're seeing something kind of normal that these things generally idle in the nine to 12 watt range. But this particular unit, we actually got a little higher than we were expecting. And we were kind of in the 11 to 14 watt range is what we saw at idle. And then maximum power consumption, we stayed under the 65 watt power brick and we actually only got up to about 59 watts in our testing. But to get there, it was not easy. We actually had to go and push this thing very hard to get to that level. As part of our tiny mini micro series, something that we're doing with absolutely all of these systems is we're kind of coming away with a key takeaway. So what do we learn by purchasing the system? I'm gonna cheat here a little bit and I'm gonna talk about two things. The first one we're gonna talk about is the bottom of the system. So what you're gonna see here is that we actually got a Windows 7 Pro key and that's this little sticker down here. So this system, unlike a lot of the other ones that we've purchased, you actually have a li license key and it was a Windows 7 rather than a Windows 10 Pro license key. Now, of course you can do the upgrade and we have done that, but it's something to look out for. The other thing that we wanted to talk about was that the naming conventions for these sometimes can be a little bit misleading. And a great example of that is that the 705G2 still used DDR3 memory, whereas this system is Intel based and it uses as the 800G2 uses DDR4 memory. So it's a different generation of memory. And the other thing that you see is that on the 705G3 mini, when we looked at that, it didn't have a USB-C port in the front of the system, whereas this does. So even though you would expect a G3 system to have more modern features like that Type-C port, it didn't necessarily have it. And that's really something that we're looking at in this entire Project Tiny Mini Micro series. There are so many options out there that really the only way to figure this out is to go out and test them and or to do a lot of research. And so that's what we're doing. And we went through and we purchased lots of them just to go figure this out. Since we have relatively decent performance, we have relatively low power consumption and noise. Something I just think is really important for folks to think about is that this is a great system if you don't really need all the new performance and features of the newer systems. I mean, this doesn't have the GPU that we saw on the Lenovo P320 Tiny, so 
that doesn't have that. But on the other hand, it's much lower power, which is great. It's also way less expensive. And this thing is so inexpensive at $205. I mean, if you think about it, this is less money than going out and purchasing just a Xeon E processor that's four cores these days. So relatively, this is a great value. You get an entire system for that. And you also get the Windows 7 Pro or Windows 10 Pro license, which is awesome. Going back a generation, you can get the Core i5 4000 series. And something you'll see there is that they are much less expensive. Usually they are DDR3, but you also get less performance. And so I actually really like this kind of as a starting point for the Project Tiny Mini Micro because I feel that it's a good balance of, well, it's older, but it's still very usable technology. So I think this is a great value point and depending on what you purchase that. Now, if you're purchasing these things for $300 and they have a eight gig configuration and an old SSD, I don't think that's a great, great buy at all. But if you're closer to the $200 range, I think it's very reasonable. And hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see the next time we come out with new videos. We have a ton of these Project Tiny Mini Micro videos that we're coming out with. And so I think you definitely enjoy them. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.